All right, I started the separation and segregation part one. And I put it on my Abraham's Promises playlist. Now, I also was going to read from Ezekiel chapter 14, but I'd already done a previous study on that. So what I did was is I just added that to the playlist of Abraham's promises. So I'm going to make that this Bible study part of that playlist. Now, let's go to the book of Amos. And for those who don't know it, that's, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your King James Bibles, or Geneva, or Webster's, yeah, the dictionary guy, to uh, Amos chapter 3. And this is part of the Israel separation and segregation, I guess, series, or series of studies anyway, so. Okay, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Iniquity is sin. But did you catch that? He said, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. I mean, this is the Lord speaking. He says, You only, you know, he's basically saying, Only you I've known of all the families of the earth. I mean, that sounds pretty specific to me. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Hmm. Think about that. You know, when all these politicians hang out with all these wicked people, can two walk together except they be agreed? And the answer is, no, they have to agree. Verse 4, will a lion roar in the forest when it hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? A gin is a type of trap by the way. Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Well, back in the old days, uh, people would sit on the walls, the watchmen, the soldiers, and when they saw an enemy coming, they would blow the horn and warn everybody. You know, soldiers, get your, you know, get your, uh, get your weapons, get to the wall. We've got an enemy coming. And it's interesting because there's uh, even a feast of the Lord called the Feast of Trumpets. And even the Lord says he's going to come at the last Trump. Not Donald Trump, but... A trump is um, the sound that a trumpet makes. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Oh yeah, the Lord will send evil to a city. When a city's evil, he'll repay you evil for evil. Verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. 
but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. See, the Lord reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Of course, most people won't listen, but those that do oftentimes can escape the worst. Verse 8. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken, but who can prophecy? Publish in the palaces of Ashdod, and in the palaces of the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Assyria. Behold the great tumults in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. Uh, Samaria was the capital city of northern Israel. They separated from southern Judah, whose capital was Jerusalem, and they set up false worship and started going after false gods early on. You probably heard of King Ahab. Well, he was a king of Assyria, uh, Samaria. And remember the woman at the well? She was a Samaritan. Well, she was an Israelite. And God got so mad that when you read Jeremiah 3, 8, God divorced Israel, the ten tribes, the northern ten tribes, because they went off and started doing Satan worship. But he didn't divorce Judah because of the promise that he had made to King David that he would always have a man to sit upon the throne. Well, Christ was of David, and he's king, and he's going to have a kingdom, and he's going to sit on his throne, and every kingdom has a king, has laws. And he's going to rule with a rod of iron. But that day is not quite yet. So, the Lord's going to send those of Ashdod and the land of Egypt and have them go against Samaria. He's going to use Egypt to punish Samaria. And that's what they're talking about. Because the Samaritans would oppress people. They were, they were evil. Uh, they went into e evil early on. So, in Jeremiah 3, 8, they, God divorced them. But, in the book of Hosea, there was a promise to remarry. And that's what the marriage supper of the Lamb is. You know, everybody wants to make you think that, you know, oh, well, we're just a bunch of Gentiles. We're not Israel. Who says? God divorced Israel. With the promise to remarry them. I got a lot of material on this subject. Verse 10. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh, taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria in the corner of a bed and, and in Damascus in a couch. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory, ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. You know, in verse 14 there, it says, I will also, I will also visit the altars at Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. Bethel, El was a contraction for God, and Beth is 
a word that means house. So it basically means house of God. But they weren't doing anything for the God of the Bible. They were doing stuff for the God of the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the devil, and what have you. So, let's go back and read Amos 3, verses 1, 2, and 3 again. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, in the context of time, this is, I believe this is after King Ahab. The Bible records that Ahab did more to provoke the Lord to evil than all the kings before him. Ahab built groves. He was heavy into Satan worship. Perhaps you've heard of his wife. Her name was Jezebel. Oh, yeah. Lord wasn't pleased. And you know what? Lord's long-suffering. He'll put up with a lot, but then there comes a time when that's it. He just, he says, up oh, the cup of the iniquity is full. Time to pour it out. And he does. So, all right, well, I did part one of segregation, separation and segregation. Uh, take a look at Ezekiel 14. I did a 45-minute study on that. So I guess technically this is part three of the separation and segregation. You know, the Lord even says, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. And people will quote John 3.16 and say, See, God loves the whole world. But to do that, they have to ignore the Old Testament. You know, if my father had left a large estate and when he died and you know left a will and in the will it says all family members invited to the reading of the will okay so you know people come all the family comes there you know people bring their girlfriends um, maybe a friend you know and then they read the will. And, you know, for example, my dad would say in the will, it says, I want each and every one of you to have an equal part of my inheritance. And, you know, the girlfriends and the friends are all jumping up and down going, woo -hoo, yeah, he left us an equal share. Well, no, because the will was for the family only. It's not for the whole world. You know, that's kind of how they do the Bible. Hear this word which the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Is it for the whole world? Or is the Bible just for... Israel only. Has the whole world ever built churches, printed Bibles, sent out missionaries? You know, I don't think so. Europe is the only place where Christianity ever took root, and you would never know that going there today. You would never know it. Same with America. America's got a lot of churches. There isn't much truth being taught. And I'm not saying I have all the truth. I absolutely don't. I'm sure I'm wrong on some things that I don't know about. And if people show me, well, 
you know, from the Bible alone, um, I've changed my view and repented and apologized. But, you know, all this, I just posted an article today. Um, there's a guy named Louis Farrakhan. He claims to be the leader of the black nation of Islam. Uh, and his thing is, uh, kill all the white devils. Yeah, okay. Uh, Islam claims to that Jesus was a sinless prophet. And Jesus said, love thy neighbor, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor as thyself. Louis Farrakhan says, kill all the white people. Doesn't sound like he follows the Jesus that I know. And he's got, believe it or not, he's got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers. They're serious, people. They're serious. And if we are Israel, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be for us. Don't be counting on the pre-trib rapture. Because I don't think it's going to happen. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. And uh, this is... Uh, just so you know, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' precious name, amen.